Okay, in this video, we're going to have a look at a little air pressure sensor. And you can see the breakout board mounted on my breadboard. Now this is the actual air pressure sensor here. It's a six pin device. It's configured as a Wheatstone bridge. It has a range of 0 to 40 kilopascals or 0 to 5.8 pounds per square inch. And the output of the Wheatstone bridge is fed into this chip here which is the HX710. It has an amplifier with a gain of 128 and has a 24 bit analog to digital converter. Now the output of the ADC is going to be fed into the SCAM3 board where we'll actually measure the pressure coming out of the pressure sensor. Now if you look at the sensor itself, there's six vent holes, there's three on either side. Now they're vented to the ambient atmosphere. So when we take a reading, it's going to be a gauge PSI reading. It's because it's going to be referenced to the 14.7 pounds of the ambient atmosphere at sea level. So when we hook up a hose up to the input port of the pressure sensor, when we blow into it and create some pressure, we could read that pressure using the SCAMP3 board. Okay, I have a rubber hose connected up to my pressure sensor, which you can see here. I put a little hole in the hose right here, so when I blow into the hose, it's going to have a little bit of air escaping, so I'm not, I'm not blowing into a closed sensor. And then when I create pressure, you're going to see these 16 LEDs come on. As the pressure increases, they're going to get more LEDs. So I'll blow into the hose, and you can watch the LEDs. I blow hard. And I have total control. I can start off. Okay, here's the schematic diagram of the circuit that I built on my breadboard. And you can see the two main components. There's my scamp board and there's my pressure sensor breakout board with the pressure sensor and the HX710 chip. Now the scamp board is powering the breakout board with 3.3 volts. You can see the 3.3 volts is fed into VCC. The grounds are connected together. Pin 3 of the scamp board is the clock and that's fed into the clock input of the breakout board. And the ADC output of the breakout board is fed into pin 2 which is an input. So every time we pulse pin 3, that's a clock, we're going to get one bit coming out of the ADC into pin 2. So after 24 clock pulses of pin 3, we're going to have 24 bits entered into pin 2. And that 24 bit word will be our pressure data. Okay, the hose that's connected to my pressure sensor does not have a hole in it anymore. I cut that off. I have a glass of water on my bench. So when I put the, the hose into the water, and feed it further and further down into the bottom of the glass, the column of air in, in the rubber hose will be compressed and the pressure will increase and we'll see that on the LEDs on the SCAMP board. So next time you do laundry and the tub is filling up, this is how the washer knows when the tub is full. So when I put the hose into the, into the glass and I force it down, you can see the LEDs it's at the bottom and I bring it up, so you see how it's measuring the pressure increase in the hose. So that's how we could do level, liquid level uh, measurement using a hose and a pressure sensor. Okay, here's the code running on the SCAMP board. And it's written in Flashforth, so we'll go through it quickly. So the first thing I do, I create two values, two 16-bit values. One is called high byte, the other one is called low word. Then we set up the GPIO so pin 2 will be set up as an input. It's going to accept the ADC bitstream. And pin 3, GPIO, will be set up as an output. And that will be the clock. So we go down. This word will detect when pin 2 goes low. Next is pulse. That's going to generate a 1 microsecond pulse. So pin 3 will go low. Then pin 3 will go high. Then pin 3 will go low. That will generate a 1 uh, microsecond pulse. And that's going to be our clock. So this is where we start getting the data from the ADC. So first we're going to look at high byte. So we're going to wait until D out of the ADC goes low. That means it's not busy. So when it's high, that means it's busy. It's doing a conversion. So we wait for uh, pin 2 to go low. That means we're ready to accept data. Then we're going to generate 8 clock pulses. And we're, going to, we're going to take in 8 bits and we're going to put those 8 bits into the high byte. Then we're going to do it again, but we're going to do it 16 times. It's called low word, so we're going to send out a clock 16 times, and we're going to take in 16 bits. So with the 16 here and the 8 up here, that's 24 bits. 
So now we have 24 bits of data. So if we go down further, this is bars. This is how many LEDs I could turn on on the scamp board from 1 to 16. Test, I'll look in that later. We'll, we'll check that out later. And here's the main, uh, the main program. It's called air question mark. So I initialize the GPIO. Then we go into a begin until loop. And it's going to take in the high byte. That's going to be 8 clock pulses. And it's going to take in the low word. That's going to be 16 clock pulses. So now we have 24 bits. So we have a 24 bit word. I divide it by 100 because I don't need the resolution. So I'm scaling it down. And then I, I max and min my, my uh, outputs from 15,000 to 8,600. And this will calculate how many bars on, on the scamp board. And this is going to be in a continuous loop. So we're taking in 24 bits. And then I calculate how many bars I'm going to, I'm going to uh, turn on, how many LEDs I'm going to turn on on a scamp board. So that's the, basically the, all of the, all the program you need there is called air question mark. You run that. And then you could, you could apply pressure to the sensor. And we'll get the corresponding LEDs on the scamp board. Okay, I have TerraTerm up and running on my computer. It's connected to the scamp board, which is connected up to the pressure sensor. Now we're going to run the word test. Now I made the word test because I don't know how consistent these these sensors are. If I get another sensor, will it will it be the same as the one I have here? I only have the one sensor, so that's why I made up the word test. So when I run test, it's going to send out the value that's coming out of the ADC with nothing connected. There's no hose connected. There's no uh, pressure being applied. So I'll run test and we'll see the value that we get. So we're getting 79.50, so say around 8,000. So that's with no pressure. So we could test out the dynamic range. We could see how far this goes. So, so now if I hook up the hose, hook up, uh, you, you get some hose. Put it onto the sensor. Now run test again, and I'll blow into it. Now this is a hose without a hole in it, so we could actually get a very large range. Now in mine, I wanted to go from about 8,000 to about 15,000. That was my range. So I'm going to run test again, and we'll see what kind of range we get. Okay, there's about 8,000, so, so I'll blow into it. I'll create some pressure. And I could get up to about 80,000, but I only wanted to go up to 15, so I'll do that. About there. So with a hole in the hose, that's probably going to be my range. So it's up to you. So this is how you could test the dy dynamic range of the sensor when you get it. And then you could figure out how many bars uh, that you want to send out on the LED display. So this gives you an idea. Of, of your sensor of the dynamic range. Okay, so that was my little tutorial on how to get this little pressure sensor up and running. Now I'm working on a little MIDI project where I'm making a breath controller where I'm making a keyboard sound like a wind instrument, like a saxophone. So my plastic tubing, I have this little device here. It's a it's an adjustable orifice and I'm going to tee it into the plastic tubing like this. Then I can adjust the size of the hole. It's like a little needle valve by this little set screw. They'll determine how hard you have to blow uh, into the tubing to get the, uh, your dynamic range. That's going to come in handy. So think about some ideas what you can make with this little pressure sensor and the SCAMP 3 board.